Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Best Show Ever podcast, the podcast where I interview people about the best concerts they ever saw in their lives. Uh, I'm Cam Hurt. I'm your host, and this is just a, a very cool week that we got going on right now. Um, Goose fans, this is your week. I'm assuming a bunch of people who are listening to this episode right now are massive Goose fans, um, and and boy, you guys are in for a treat uh, because this week. We have got not only just one guest from Goose, we've got two guests from Goose in the same episode, Rick Materatunda and Peter Ansbach from Goose in the house, on the pod uh, today. Uh, and I'm, I'm super, super pumped about it. Uh, these guys have had a massive last year in 2023, uh, and they're setting up for an even bigger year in 2024. Um, with some new music out right now, the the Ted Tapes jams. If if you guys have not checked out the Ted Tapes 2024, um, get on that. Fantastic music, and um, they've also released um, at this point uh, they've released the Chateau Sessions, uh, Part One, which is them getting into the Goose catalog a little bit with their new drummer Cotter. Um, that video is awesome. Um, at the time of the interview, we we only have the Ted Tapes out, and so. Um, we do get to talk about those a little bit. We talk about, you know, how those kind of felt amongst the band as they're getting started. Um, and we talk a little bit about, um, just that transition and how, how it's, how it's felt and, and what Cotter's like as a guy. It's, um, super cool to get to chat with these guys and, and talk a little bit about that. We also get into like the internet, making stuff, having stuff received well or poorly on the internet and how that affects, uh, artists and people who make things. I think if you're someone who is looking to, uh, to start making things or you want to start kind of putting yourself out there in a, a public way as an artist, um, th there's there's some really cool advice from these two dudes um, in this episode. And so um, it's cool for a lot of reasons. We go over their best shows. We go over, um, you know, some of the stuff that they did early on in their careers. Uh, but Either way, just incredible to have these guys on. I'm a big fan of Goose. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. They're, I got the poster right behind me um, from their show. I'm not, not trying to hide it like these guys. Um, but this is a very cool look into, um, you know, their live music experience as concert goers. And so a um, couple shout outs I want to make just early on in this episode here. Some people who are doing some cool stuff. Um, one, uh, an account making some great art that goes into apparel and a bunch of different things, uh, dead and good company. Um, it's a fantastic artist, fantastic apparel designer guy. Um, he, the dead and good company is his Instagram handle. Um, and he made, uh, some sweatshirts for goose goose miss that were just, I felt like it was one of the coolest pieces of merch there that weekend. And I, I, I'm wearing it in this episode. I wear it. in like, I think a couple other episodes, I wear it all the fucking time. Um, Check out Dead and Good Company. He's got a bunch of great merch, a bunch of great um, stuff coming out all the time. Uh, and also a, a, another organization I kind of want to shout out. You can also follow these folks on Instagram. It's the Western Sun Foundation. Um, organization that's working directly hand in hand with Goose to make an impact uh, in the communities that Goose is traveling through. Um, basically, these guys are a, non a nonprofit who are in the business of um, collecting and then dispersing donations within the communities that Goose is traveling through. Uh, so as you're touring around with Goose, uh, if you make a donation to the Western Sun Foundation, they are doing great things in the communities that they're traveling through uh, in, in, in the world of music therapy, music education, uh, the well-being of women and children. It's good. Uh, and environmental sustainability. Also good. Um, I got to chat with them recently. I'm hoping to kind of help them out with some of the stuff that they've got coming on, uh, going on down the down the pipeline here. Um, they're going to do a community-led campaign uh, through March and April, um, where we have the community nominate and vote on the organizations that they're going to donate to. Um, and so, if you want, if you've got organizations that you're interested in having, you know, funds allocated to through the Western Sun Foundation. Definitely, you know, follow them on Instagram, nominate this organization in your town or uh, the one that you know of um, and get get it on their radar. And then through June and September, they're just going to be, you know, 
ripping through their tours, helping out along the way. And so look out for the Western Sun Foundation when you're at Goose Shows. Um, if you're looking to help out and, and nominate some organizations for them to, to assist, uh, do that now uh, and through April. Um, but enough of that, enough of this, this intro. Let's get to uh, what we're trying to get to here. Conversation that I had with Rick Materatunda and Peter Onspach uh, from Goose the Band. Um, first, here's a little music from Loom uh, called What I Mean. But what's been up? What's been up with you boys lately? What's been going on? The new music sounds fantastic. Yeah, pretty well, we got that uh, <laughs> pretty uneventful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> sleeping. <laughs> nothing nothing uh, yeah. much going on. We got the TED Tapes 2024 out now um, with our new drummer, Cotter Ellis. Yeah, that's been a trip for sure. Um, we're, we're really uh, we're really stoked on it. The music is is amazing on TED Tapes. I I love it personally. We had a lot of fun putting it together um with some of the like first jams and first like recordings or like we weren't really recording i mean we were just jamming so just like the first sessions with cotter uh and yeah it was a pretty special time yeah i got to drive across the country the day that you guys dropped new music so i was just listening to jams driving across the country just taking it all in and it just sounds it sounds so great it sounds so free and like of course like you guys were gonna get a talent, like a talented drummer was gonna come up no matter what. I'm sure everyone that you guys auditioned or talked about is a talented drummer, but like, what about, what about Cotter? Or like, what about hanging out with Cotter kind of made it seem like this is gonna be the guy we're gonna be spending a lot of time with and making stuff with. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of amazing moments, um, you know, throughout, throughout the process. Of, of finding somebody new and uh with cotter it was there was like these very very special moments uh that i remember um where like we were all in the room and and rick and i were like you know just like looking at each other just absolutely geeking out of our minds at how much fun we were having and i think that was probably that was one of the first moments i i knew like i knew we had something special here you know it was probably like the Leo jam on Ted tapes is like the first thing we played with him. And like literally four minutes into that is like when we had one of these moments and I was just like, Oh my God, this is, this is something special. So that was really, that was really a pinnacle thing for me. And he's just such a nice guy. He works so hard. He's, you know, I couldn't say enough nice things about him. You know, he's just, he's been awesome to hang out with and, and get to know. So, um, we'd actually like, we'd known him for, um, you know, number of years, just like seen his playing, uh, known as other bands and stuff like that. So we knew about him coming into the, the search. Um, so it was just, uh, it was really awesome that we never played music together. So it was really awesome that that worked out in the way it did. I remember the back half of that jam was, was, was kind of one of those moments too. We kind of like went through a few different things and, you know, did, did some of the things that we do. And then, kind of just like spit out somewhere and him and Trev just locked into this groove and we just kind of made weird sounds for like another 15 minutes or something like that. We were just looking at each other like, this is, this is kind of tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Leo uh, jam is so confident and it builds so confident from the beginning. I mean, it's like starts off nice and ambient and just, um, that had to be such a good feeling to, to feel already. So, I mean, if that's one of the first times you guys record with him, well, that was the first I mean, the first time we played with him. So I mean, like, yeah, wow, you know, just going off of that, and then you know, then we played some songs and stuff with him after that, and that was that was really amazing too. It, it was just you know, it was a great experience all around. Great day that was. You know, aside from like the feeling of of energy um, that we were experiencing and stuff, one of the first things I noticed was was Trevor. Trevor just like was playing in a way that i'd never really heard him play before um and he was just he was kind of speaking in a way that I'd, I'd never heard before and it was it was that i just like i remember i have like a visualization around it that that stuck with me from that first day and that kind of that call it kind of followed through kind of stuck with it it's just like i don't know everyone's just communicating in uh in a really interesting way 
um, feels just really like open and free, like you said. Yeah, I mean, it, when you watch that video, he's literally dancing. I don't think I've ever seen uh, Trevor, oh, Trevor dance yeah, on stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, and that's something that a lot of people commented on. It, I mean, I'm sure for for you guys, like releasing the the info about this or like making the announcement of this is like it's super fun. It's got to be a blast to like, you know, here's right. the guy, here's here's the video. It's awesome. Uh, there's also like the internet is so lame. I mean, how, how do you guys like sort of like do you guys na have to navigate that or speak on that or anything? Or it's obviously not like guiding decisions or like anything like that. But I mean, you have to kind of like weather that a little bit with how stupid the internet is all the time. It's, it's been an interesting like you know experience for sure. Um, I I mean I this taken this time to really uh, take a step back from it not that i was like in super deep before but like i'd, I'd pop in every once in a while and be like what's going on in here you know <laughs> it's it's hard not to I and mean, like you're you know you put a lot of work into a thing and, and you're doing a thing you're spending all your time doing a thing and people are like talking about the thing so you're kind of like well what are they what are they talking about you know but it's it's really um it's i i think inevitably it's not the best thing for us to do like the more the let the less we can do that the better and just focus on um you know the art of it i guess and um have our heads buried in that and you know it's the that place is for people to talk about it and have you know express their ideas and feelings about things and that's that's what it's for and yeah um you know we're it's yeah it shouldn't it shouldn't inform what what we're doing or what anyone else is doing for that matter yeah i, I mean people ask me about that a lot all the time they'll be like oh i would love to make some stuff but you know i i could never handle the the backlash that you know you get or like i I could never like deal with the comments i'm like oh well i mean definitely don't let that stuff like deter you from making things you know i mean it's like yeah it's a crazy concept <laughs> yeah yeah a crazy concept um yeah i don't i don't know it's it's uh it, it takes a lot of discipline for sure to um to just not go in there to not not like not engage um, right that's i think that's the discipline you i mean you, you can try to uh you know employ some discipline in in terms of like looking at it but not letting it affect what you're doing but it's it's just in there once it's in there you can't you know it's just in there ideas and you know a lot of things kind of bounce off but then one weird thing will stick with you and mess with you and get in your head and you know historically like i think the things that have gotten to me the most are the things that i agree with you know mm. when i yeah, say something yeah. like someone that's like talks back i'm like shit that's kind of kind of that's actually he's kind of yeah. right yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so i don't know it's uh but no it's it's been a good time to uh i think you know take a pretty conscious step back from all of that and Disconnect. focus on i mean like we've yeah we've we've been um the time we've been spending together working on things and uh all the things that we're excited about for the you know the incoming future um it's it's been like a it's been amazing so um I, that's that's the most grounding thing for me is just is like spending when we're like spending time together create being creative working on things together it's like kind of like when when we're doing that it's kind of like oh yeah whatever this is this is what we're this is what it's all about it's all it's all that really matters yeah, all those great. other thing, you know, the vibes are great, and, and all those yeah. other things, like just you know the chatter and stuff, just you know distracts you from like how much fun you're supposed to be having, you know. I oh, yeah. I, I was just like, you know, first first day we like dropped a clip. I was just like, whole first half of the day, I was just like, fuck yeah, we just dropped like <laughs> this, this amazing piece of music that I'm so proud of, and like what a great moment. And then like, you know, you, you get some text about like people who are reading stuff on the internet and then it's just like, it all comes crashing down. You know, it's just like, well, hold yeah. on a second. I was, I love this. I, I, why am I, you know, it's like, you just can't let yourself get down via that. Oh yeah. That, that trap. It's so easy to like have that one thing be the focus on. And there, yeah, there are things that like, uh, you know, comments that people have made that like happened months ago that I'm still thinking about um in a weird way but like yeah it, you gotta not engage i'm i'm so unbelievably bad at not engaging um I'm <laughs> like eight nine hours a day on social media and it's like it's hard 
absolutely <laughs> the worst thing for you. <laughs> it's, I, I, I've, I've, I've been thinking about this thing that's like kind of historically sort of unprecedented, this, you know, the nature of, of all of this, you know, um, yeah. it's, it's super unprecedented. So it, I, I try to remind myself of that sometimes that like, right. you know, some, some dude would put out some music like a hundred years ago or whatever. And it just, just thinking about how different things are now and how long, you know, how, how long time has gone by and people have been working on music and working on things and, you know, expressing themselves and, and whatever. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, a, just a thought that I have sometimes. No, I, it is, it, it is super weird. I mean, you don't have yeah. too many people that you can go to that is that have had to deal with, uh, these issues, you know, it's not like you can go back two decades. It's, it's a, it's a fairly recent thing to have mm -hmm. to, to deal with this instant, um, uh, conversation around whatever you put out. But, um, I mean, ultimately the, like, you know, there's the catharsis in putting something out. There's like, we've made this here. It is, this is a presentation of us get to put that out. And like, that's for me, the best part is when I get to like put something new out and then be like, you know, that could either do really well or do not so well, or it could get, uh, trolled on the internet. Uh, but either way it was like, wow, thank God I got to pull that out of myself and we we're onto a new thing, you know? Yeah. I think like the, the stuff that Rick Rubin talks about is, is really, you know, what, you know, I feel like a lot of people who, anyone who has something that they want to, they're compelled to make and potentially put out into the world. It's, it's, that's, that's the thing the, the way he talks about all of that, I think is, is what people really need to hear these days, I, I guess, in terms of, you know, hearing about people that are, don't, don't want to make something because they're scared to put it out. And, you mm -hmm. know, because of what people are going to say on the internet, it's kind of like, that's, that's not good. You know, like people, yeah, we, all need, we all need to, we all need to be making whatever we're compelled to make. That's what we're here. You know, that's what we're here for. So um, yeah, Rick Rubin says a lot of cool stuff about the philosophy around all that. Been massive on that book that he put mm, out. I yeah. got that last year and it's like, yeah, That's sweet. <laughs> been ripping through that book. And for any of my friends who are listening right now who have been annoying about the book, get, get, let's just get the book. Let's yeah. buy the book. Read the book. <laughs> the creative <laughs> Read the act. Read the book. <laughs> Read the book. Um, well, listen, I would I would love to talk about this stuff with you guys all day, but this is not what the podcast is about. We, What's the podcast pod about? The podcast. <laughs> um what are we talking about you guys cool with me you guys cool with me doing the redbird thing <laughs> when i did what? the redbird thing how'd you guys the the chicago that was the guy? first time i that was the first thing of yours that i saw i was like nice this guy's funny <laughs> the, the freaking that's, bird that, freaking time for a bird to fly oh that yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> that, that i was, was like this, this guy this is amazing it's for like 10 people nice <laughs> yeah. That video. um yeah. well the podcast is about um the what podcast if we, is what if we had said no like <laughs> sorry man not cool <laughs> yeah. we, hey we were, honestly, we, were, we were really pissed about that <laughs> i'm glad you brought that up um mm -hmm. yeah not cool yeah the interview's over <laughs> um <laughs> hey man that would be great i would love if you guys were honest with me about that um but it sounds like it was your favorite thing in the world which is awesome um <laughs> <laughs> podcast that we're on right now is about uh shows that you guys have seen uh, and so we're going to go over some shows. You guys have, of course, have done incredible shows this past year, been doing great shows for the last nine years now, but we're going to be talking about none of those today. Uh, just shows that you guys that. have seen. I love that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but to get started, I mean, because people have talked about your shows. Sure. I think Ryan Storm. That's what we were, we were talking about. People talking about our shows up until this point, actually, kind of. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I think he's got that covered. I'm not going to take any of that from him. You guys can no, talk about your show on the podcast, yeah. but we're going to talk about your shows today. Um, and with that, to start, what are the first what are the first concerts you guys ever saw in your life, Peter? We can we'll start with you. Sure, um, we'll start with me. Uh, I think the first show I ever saw was a uh, Brian Wilson like Pet Sounds anniversary tour show. No shit. It was one wow. of the first concerts cool. my parents brought me to. It was awesome. I think it was at the Beacon, and uh, I was maybe like eight or nine, something like maybe ten. Like I was pretty young, um, but it was really exciting. I mean, I was just like, I was just kind of taking it all in. I didn't, 
you know, and fully understand like everything that was going on. But I was just like, wow, this is like really special, you know, just being in a, in a crowd of people like in, in that way, you know, I'd seen like some shows like, uh, like Broadway type shows or musicals and stuff like that. And, but it was different, you know, concert environment, everyone singing along. That was, that was really special and, uh, had an impact. And, and then I think the next show I, like the next show I remember seeing after that, where I didn't go with my parents was, uh, the gin blossoms at the yeah. Ridgefield Ridgefield playhouse. Uh, they are like, they're like this, like, I don't know, nineties, two thousands rock band. And, uh, my friend's dad like took me and the rest of my band at the time we were called stuck on the reef. This is back in pre, this is predates great blue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe change it to reef after a while, <laughs> but whatever. We were uh, we were in high school. Hooked on I, reef, yeah, <laughs> just John <John> Reef. <laughs> and I remember we uh we were like all getting ready to go, and my friend's dad picked me up, and we were going to pick up like my buddy Seth and uh, our our drummer at the time, Andy Castaldi, and we showed up at my friend Seth's house, and his mom had just busted him and Andy for like smoking pot outside. Oh, <laughs> and we're the like. Reef. We were like, oh, what's going on, man? Like, are you guys going to be able to come to the show? And like, she let them go and, and, uh, <laughs> but they got in trouble, but the, they got to go to the show anyway. And then we're all there at Ritual Playhouse and they just like shredded it. It was amazing. We were, we were all just like, we were all blown away. And then that kind of like fueled us trying to be a better band. I think that was like an informative concert for, for all of us. Oh, like Especially us. for Seth and Andy. <laughs> super light bus still got to go to the show that would have yeah, been yeah. unheard of right that's a good mom right there there's just like you know what what hot in the early 2000s yeah Yo, yeah in the bush administration oh. that, was, that was not good back then to be caught with pot i mean kind of a golden area to be gold caught smoking pot you know oh yeah i mean it's it's it was just more of a thing back then i mean now you get caught yeah. smoking pot it's just like hey yeah you know it's not as yeah. look at you go Right. yeah <laughs> was uh was was pet sounds like was that something that you were trying to see with your dad or your your family and they you no, made them they, take you or they just took me like they were just like we're yeah. going to see this um i was like okay great like i didn't you know i didn't fully understand like the magnitude of pet sounds at that time but i was oh, like man. wow it was it was an amazing show they put a lot like so much production and really cool instruments of all different kinds it was it was sick Went back to school and you're telling your friends about pet sounds. They're like, we're listening to Ludacris. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. It was, it was fun. Um, <laughs> Rick, what about your first show? First concert you ever saw? So there's, there's kind of like two that there's two different categories because you know, there's like when you're a kid, you think you're, you know, your parents bring you places and you, you know, you remember some of them and you, you don't remember others. The first like concert I ever remember going to was really young. It was probably like, three or four or something, and uh, it was a Beach Boys concert. Also, actually, whoa, yeah, that's damn, wild. dude. I know, that's kind of weird. That's um, I wasn't, I wasn't tuned in at all. There was like it was outdoors somewhere, and there was all I remember was a big hill. There was a bunch of kids, and I was playing with a bunch of kids, and like down there, there were some, you know, people doing a concert. But um, technically, also Beach Boys first concert, but. Um, oh. first concert that I like really, um, remember or, you know, was there for and really took in and really Im impacted me was, uh, uh, Dave and friends at the, uh, Hartford civic C center or I don't know, some, some theater, a big theater in, in Hartford or probably uh, yeah. or maybe in a small arena. I don't know. Some venue in Hartford. My sister got me tickets. I was probably 12 or something like that, I would guess. And, uh, Trey. Trey was doing that tour with him and the band was like sick and um there was just a bunch of really memorable I didn't really know who Trey was at that point uh I was like yeah. my sister my sister was big Dave fan and then I became big Dave fan from just like hearing that and from a young age all that and uh she yeah she got me for my birthday or something she got me tickets to to go to this Dave and Friends concert and Trey was there I was like who's this guy he's like ripping guitar um <laughs> And then, you know, there's like this, this kind of, uh, it was a famous, like three, three little bird. They played three little birds and walked off stage. And then like the whole crowd kept singing it for like, for like 10 minutes, um, wow. until they came back out and then they went back into it. It was really cool. Um, but that was, that was the first, like, you know, 
uh, impactful concert I, I experienced, I think. Was that, and you got to like go along with the big sister, like she took you with, or was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she's a, like 10, she's like 10 years older than me. So it was, that was a, um, it's a it's funny, you know, funny break in time. You know, I was like a little chap while she was in high school doing like high school partying and stuff. And like, you know, in the nineties, it was, it was pretty, it was a pretty cool program they had with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I had my older half brother was ten years older too, and I remember just being like, "Oh, he's going to see fish," and that's like a mm. thing I can't go do. Or like when he would leave the house to go do shows, it's like, "All right, like I'm one day I'll get to leave the house and do the show and everything." So that's a cool like first, you know. I remember that too? When like the Dave shows, like summer outdoor shed Dave shows, I wasn't allowed to go to for a long time because. I don't know if my parents said this or like someone would just someone I just had the idea like oh, I can't go to that because people have sex on the lawn at the show <laughs> so I can't go you know that but that was like that was the that was like the word on the street was like people are smoking pot and having sex on the lawn so you can't I can't go to those shows yet we we didn't go to a show and we didn't go to a fish show in 2010 I was the, definitely the leader of the pack that like wanted to go but my buddies wouldn't go with me because one of our friends got caught the night before selling mushrooms and they're like, we can't go. Like he got arrested. I'm like, we're not going to sell mushrooms though. That's not our plan. We're going to take the mushrooms. And we're going to take them and not sell them. <laughs> we're going to eat them. So then we just like, didn't go. Cause there was like, you know, there's the, the stories of what you hear are going on at the shows and stuff. And it's like, there was no sex heaven on the lawn. Maybe one guy. <laughs> yeah. One guy, maybe. I remember I was like, damn, that's crazy. Guy, guy <laughs> throws a crazy concert and that's night. <laughs> Everybody's having sex. Wow. Yeah, they're all just they're all doing it and he's singing and like, I don't know. <laughs> the songs are good. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if the songs are that good. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um Speaking of a wild scene at a show, do you guys ever have like a weird, uh, like a worst concert experience? And this doesn't have to be, you, know, you don't have to put down any bands at this point. It, this could have been a, your fault, you know, but do you have any uh, like worst concert experiences in your life? I got one. Um, and it was, it was, uh, you know, ironically, it was like, this is the best, the worst concert experience, but also the best concert experience at the same time, same show. Like, you know, we, uh, it was my first fish show. We went in, it was like Hartford 09. And, uh, me and my buddies, you know, we were just, we were dumb, you know, <laughs> we were like sophomores in high school, not smart, just, you know, taping like an eighth of bud to our legs and like, or something like that. I had like this yeah. massive bowl that I just somehow got in through with security. Like, it was just like, it was dumb. Anyway, we Just got in like right crazy. when doors open at 6.30 or something. Show starts at 8. We like walk right up to the lawn. We had lawns or we had pavilion seats. We were like, you know, we wanted to get high. We we're like, let's go on the lawn. Everyone smokes on the lawn. That's like, that's the place to be. And and we were just like, I don't know. It was just broad daylight. No one was really there. We were like, come on, man. It's like a fish show. I, like we can't get busted. So we just, we just break it all out. We should start chiefing bowls on the lawn. <laughs> chiefing bowls. Immediately, a huge security guy comes up. He's like, I got to take that. And we're, and we're like, what are, you, what are you talking about, man? Like, like trying to hide the stuff. He's like, give me that. And he, he takes all of our stuff. And we're like, ah, you know, it was, it was like, it was, it was terrible. We were, we were all like, what, what do we do now? You know? And then, like, consequently, later, this is that this ends up being like the most informative and most amazing concert of my life for sure. You know, we go back to our seats in the pavilion, and like the show happens, and like you know, somewhere during the second set, like somebody passes us like a joint, and like that weed was like you know real weed. Like we were definitely smoking some like some swag from high school, and somebody posts yeah. like passes us, like a legit joint, and we like we all smoke it. And we're like, oh, whoa, <laughs> what's going on? And then they play Iculus and like, he's like, read the book. And oh. I'm like, damn, I don't read enough. Like, <laughs> and they do all this kinds of crazy stuff and the yam. And we're like, wow, like we were all like changed after that point. And it was, it was honestly, it was just the best concert ever. Like we didn't, I, we didn't know a lot about fish going in, like about their music. But then right after that show, it was just like, 
diving in super hard to get in like all the information. Um, listening the, to the show when we got home. Hole. Yeah, down the rabbit hole. And it was just like, a, you know, it's like a, it was a bad turn to a, amazing <laughs> kind of experience. I'm just picturing this like security guard. The day hasn't really started yet. And he's like seated in a chair and he's like, are you yeah. fucking kidding me? He's yeah. gonna, like get up and like walk over 100%. there. hundred percent. Like I can't even imagine somebody doing this nowadays. Like, little idiots. It's just so like, dumb. Hey, what, what's up, man? You can't chief like, bowls right here. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, at I'm least wait till it gets that. dark or like <laughs> yeah i'm gonna smoke it later like i'm taking it all this is mine now it's the easiest bust i've ever done in my life a lot and, to learn kid also Definitely. you guys being like uh no it's um it's fish actually yeah um, so <laughs> uh, i was told that we were allowed to chief bowls on the lawn and broad daylight at any time at the concert oh, yeah. i just wanted to smoke a bowl with my <laughs> friends I, I was told that <laughs> that would be fine <laughs> You had to get your weed taken away to have that experience. It, yeah, it was all part of it. Hundred yeah. percent. This was a tough one. I, I was kind of like coming up short on worst concert experience. I I had like a, I had like a special chillum, you know, that I really liked, and that got taken going to Jones Beach mm. once. Damn. But, you know, I think I still had a great time. So, um, I don't know. You know, I, I, nothing, nothing's jumping out as like the worst concert experience. It's just like mm -hmm. a bummer when you gotta you're walking in you're all confident with all your stuff and then someone's like what's this even if it's just like a water bottle like i had to leave right, a water yeah. bottle at dick's and i was like it's got all my best stickers on it man yeah <laughs> i don't want to leave this by nobody likes the confiscation you know i had a cool little no. case for it it was kind of like you know it was like the you know it's like your little golden boy you know quintessential little guy quintessential nice. chillum. yeah brutal brutal what's your well, what's your worst concert experience Oh man, it th there's a couple different that could maybe be in different categories of worst show, um, but I, I've I like I have those like worst shows that turn best shows like eight six twenty one fish at Deer Creek is like a show that people really hold up and revere. And the beginning of that show, I was not doing well. I had I had taken too much too fast, and it felt like it felt we were sitting on the lawn just like that. And, uh, you know, there's no one out there. And I'm like, this is great. Blue skies. It's okay. Everything's going to be fine. And then it's just like people started coming into the lawn. It wasn't even that packed. But in my mind, I'm like, it, we're, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, being, we're being taken over. I had to like, you know, go take a little walk. You know, mm -hmm. I ended up buying a bunch of food I couldn't eat because I was like, that's what I need right now. You know, like that, that kind of a thing. It ended up being like the best show, you know, one of the best fish shows I've ever seen. And I've referenced that show as my best show ever, but like there's a, there's a, there was an hour there where it was the worst show. Yeah. Sometimes like the bad and the good exist together. It it had to happen. It was like a, the tension yeah. and release of everything yeah. being okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I also one time saw Ringo Starr and it wasn't that good. So there's that. There's <laughs> just a bad show. <laughs> weird <laughs> fucking show. He like low. yelled at some. <laughs> he like yelled at someone in the audience. He was like, I can't read your sign. It was weird. It was like, yeah. The Stop whole sending letters. <laughs> he had like guys from Toto in his band and they would like try to say something in between songs. He's like, they're not here for you. And they're like, all right, man. We just played Africa. People are stoked. Like, let me, let me wow. have a moment here. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. That That's up there. Because I just remember being, you know, <laughs> being like, what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard it's hard to pick your best show ever um mm -hmm. i've seen so many i'm sure but what do you have a a couple like honorable mentions that you would be remiss if we didn't bring them up on the on the show on the, on the pad keys and the pad um, yeah you got a, you got a bunch you got a bunch of shows here that were you know had a bunch of uh you know poignant shows important yeah meaningful shows meaningful shows yeah i don't know if i could narrow it down to one though that's i don't know it's you, really you, hard you got one you got like you got like your golden boy i don't have a golden boy and that's no? it's that's really lame for the guy who has the the best show ever podcast yeah, i i don't little, think i have one. it's a little hypocritical <laughs> um i can't even pick my favorite of last year truly 
I don't know. I feel you. Mm. I bet Peter has a golden boy. I mean, it's probably that thir- first fish show, mm. I would have to say. Okay. Yeah, it's just the most influential probably over my life, I would say. But then there's plenty of honorable mentions. Um, I think uh, going to Bonnaroo in 2016, it was like the first time I'd been to a big festival like that. A um, couple shows there, like the the Wolfpack show, I barely heard about Wolfpack and like stumbled into their tent. And it was like one of the most amazing shows I'd ever seen. I was, we were, we were all like totally blown away. That was a really special set. And then uh, remember like the Tame Impala set also being just absolutely mind blowing. We like waited in line for the pit and we just like, we were like so close. And then they, they blasted confetti, like kind of like close to the end of the set. I had no idea it was coming. And it was just, it was like, insane insane such a great such a great moment with you know and it all has to do with like the people you're with like we i was with a good group of friends um at bonnaroo it was it was just like a really really cool group and we had a lot of fun so yeah that's a good honorable mention there there's probably more i've seen a lot of shows one time rick and i went to europe to see fat freddy's drop that was pretty awesome <laughs> so, to, to three shows and uh the second one like the first one was like sick and then the second one was like the same exact everything um (laughs) you know down to like dance moves and i think some banter and and stuff it was just it was all like to a t which is you know it's normal out there outside of our scene like that's that's kind of it's kind of just like there's nothing wrong with that it's normal but we were like all right shit um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then we had tickets to the third one. We were almost, we almost didn't go. Um, we were like, should we just sell it and like go do, go do something else? You know, we we're like, no, let's get shit face drunk and go and get right in the front <laughs> and just like rage it. And we did. It was so much fun. We knew everything that was that was coming. It was honestly we, the best one. He's <laughs> like, doing, oh, doing the thing. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh, he's he's like, all right, these guys have been to every show this weekend. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we were like I, we we caught one of them outside at one point we we're like yo can you do uh can you can you play fish in the sea and he's like nah mate i'm like all right you're like yeah it's cool. okay it's okay. cool yeah no it's, you know they have their the program and you know they were in like three different countries too so we were like traveling between countries you know right that's crazy right. yeah Pretty i just cool. went on europe tour yeah, yeah. for them man sick can't believe they wouldn't play that song for you at the end, though. It's like, come on. I mean, you know, you know wasn't Listen. part of the wasn't part of the program. Sorry, right. part of the set list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wasn't on wasn't on the bill. Um. Oh man. Yeah. So I guess there's some audible mentions. Um. The you know there's there's a time in my life when I went to uh, uh when I like saw a lot of jazz in in the city mm. in Boston too, but mostly New York. Um. I like followed a bunch of guitar players primarily um like you know Schofield and uh Mike Stern uh Kurt Rosenwinkel a lot of those guys um called Pat Metheny a couple times but he was he was a little bit harder to catch sometimes but um Mm -hmm. a bunch of Schofield shows at at like the Blue Note um but Mike Stern at the 55 bar it caught a bunch of those and it's that was such a vibe the place closed down in COVID I think but it was like this tiny tiny bar in uh in the village and that was that was like this one night in particular that was some of the um most badass music i'd ever seen and it was yeah i just just like something about like small you know divey bar tiny tiny space where people are just you know like shredding and it's it's super intimate it's something about that i love like our favorite uh like one of our favorite my, my favorite kind of place to play still is this little mexican restaurant it's it's the same in in Connecticut that's uh, a similar similar thing it's just like a really interesting tiny 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 space like 50 people in there it's no one's moving it's, it's uh but we've I've had like some of the most magical experiences there um we but should yeah, go play it's, there it's, again soon yeah yeah um but it, it was like kind of a similar type space and uh yeah there's one night where um 
Oh man, I'm blanking on this dude's name right now. Richard is a bass player. I this uh I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Peter, tell him the story. Richard, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for his name. The heads are about to just rip you apart for this. <laughs> the heads of this guy. <laughs> Richard. Richard. It's Rick, uh it's Ricky. Richard. It's Rich something. Your sweet water Ricky. guy. Richard. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to come back to this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get this by the end of the thing. Come back to Richard later. Yeah, yeah, we're coming back to Richard. Because like sweet water. Yeah, this guy, oh my god, he's such a legend. Um, but yeah, Mike Stern at the 55 bar this one night was 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 some of the dopest music I've ever seen. They're just shredding. Mike Stern is such a sick guitar player. Um, he's he's got this he's got this like he's got this um, this thing. It's it's not a lot like there's really not a lot of guitar players that really crush approach notes. It's a, it's really a horn thing and like jazz. And um, he's just his his like approach note language on guitar is is you know is just like really. Uh, it's it's pretty i don't know I, it's, it's pretty unique to me he he just he rips yeah. that shit um but uh but he he kind of like has a great balance between you know hitting that stuff and then going into like going into like really melodic pentatonic type melody type things and yeah he's just one of my favorite favorite guitar players for sure him and Schofield. um anyway 55 bar in the village those are those are golden era um but yeah, so there's a couple of bone, a few Boney Bear shows that were just like super impactful mm. too. Um, or like three, I think. Because I saw him at the Cap. I've seen, I saw him at the Forest Hills a couple of, a few years ago, and uh, at uh, he threw this festival in Wisconsin. It's like the first festival he threw, the Eau Claire's Festival. Uh, they're set at that. Those each of three of those experiences were like, um, you know, felt spiritual in a way. They're just like it's just so heavy, you know. They're just pretty, pretty masterful at what they do. Yeah, I and mean, he's a pretty special dude. I mean, being from Wisconsin, everyone was very excited for Bon Iver as a concept mm -hmm. uh, when it started <laughs> surfacing, and so, uh, <laughs> um, like, wow, you can really walk through the woods to this. This is fantastic. Um, <laughs> and you know, like, he'll he he would <laughs> he would pop up and you know at Alpine Valley and like play with Dead and Co and stuff, and like having him around in Wisconsin, like, there's not a lot of. Um, there's not a huge music scene. There's almost no one, you know, making music in Wisconsin that uh, creates a scene of note. And he is, he's one of those dudes. It was like when I was living in Chicago and like Chance the Rapper popped up at everything, like Bon Iver, that, you know, they're um, Justin Vernon, that, that, that's, that's Wisconsin's guy. Um, also something you were saying about venues uh, with like a smaller venue. I, yeah, it can really, bring out um a lot in just watching a show when you're when you're in a small place when you're in a place where you feel like maybe you shouldn't there, maybe it shouldn't a show shouldn't be happening like you're like why is this amazing show happening in this tiny little club um and there's like clubs out here in la that have that sort of feel like the troubadour and um places like that but the, you know chicago was like ripe for that and it felt like there was all these cool little blues bars that you could go kingston mines or um, any of those places and see just like a phenomenal band. And then also the crowd leaves like with the special, like, wow, we get to see this little room packed out. This is not how this place is supposed to operate. Or I'm sure that kind of felt, it felt that way in some of the places you played in Europe. It was just like, can't believe we're putting on a goose show in this little room right here, you know? That's great. I, the, the, I love the small rooms. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. such a, you know, feels, feels like home in a way, you know? Yeah. You get like a low ceiling and people are all packed together. That's, mm -hmm. that's like what you want in comedy. You don't want to, I don't know how it works uh, playing a football stadium or, uh, you know, a place like Hampton Coliseum or something like that. You want like everybody like right next to you for it to work. Um, so I love, I love those kind of experiences. Um, but what about what about the granddaddy of them all? What about the best? Do you guys have a best show? I mean, Peter, you already said the, your first and worst and best is kind of <laughs> all wrapped up into that one fish show. But I could mention one more, uh, just about a, a small room. 
Um, one of the best shows I've ever seen was Theo Katzman at Garcia's. Um, and it was just mind blowing. It was like, that's a show where it felt like Theo was playing to an, in, uh, like a ma- like Madison Square Garden, but it was like Garcia's, you know, and it's like yeah. a spot I had been to, but I was just like, the command that was happening on that stage was just absolutely ridiculous. And he's just so talented I, and his songwriting is so good. It was just a really, really like, it was an impactful show. I got to meet him afterwards, which was like really awesome. And Joe Dart was part of his band. And I was definitely a big fan of those guys from the, uh, from Volpec and stuff. So it was just like a really amazing night. Like it's, and I think I went just by myself. So um, I was just kind of there, you know, not really like um, hanging out with other people. I was just there for the music. And uh, you know, that's, that's yielded some great results in my, in my time. Also, it's just like, when I was in college, I went to see Railroad Earth by myself because I, I couldn't get anyone to go with me. Um, I like was going to see concerts like all the time, my freshman year of college, especially in Nashville. So, you know, there was only so many that uh, I could get people to come. And Railroad Earth, I was like, you know, they were maybe lesser known, but I walked in, they were just like playing my favorite song that they had. Um, I think it's called Bird in a House. And it was just like, it's really, it's really profound. I, you know, there's really been some like, amazing solo show experiences that I've had um, that, you know, just make me want to keep going to shows alone sometimes just for just connecting with the music and whoever's playing uh, and not being distracted by anything really. But yeah, that Theo show was dope. He's the man. I love going to a show alone. And I think that um, like it's, it's speaking back to like making things and being someone who wants to make things. If you are, in the middle of a project or you want to start a project, I think that like taking yourself on an artist date and going to see some sort of show, whether, you know, if you're a comedian, you just go see really great comedians, you know, or whatever's available to you or go, you know, if you're, you know, even if that's not in your medium, just go see someone who is great, you know, and that'll just really spark. It sparks a ton in me. And I, I love seeing stuff by myself. Love having friends with me, of course, but you know, are you, are yeah. you an artist sway guy. Yeah, I did do the artist way through the pandemic. Mm. Yeah. Hell yeah. And that's exactly where I got that little concept from. <laughs> Good job, Rick. Yeah. Rick's got nice. all the books. <laughs> I like I love buying books. <laughs> and then and then reading I, them too. Or? And then <laughs> like, you know, I usually get a few pages in and then I don't know. I got it. But they're there, you know, it's it's cool. <laughs> it's cool that they're there. Yeah. No, I, I books are sick. Get a couple pages in. I generally got it. Just be yeah, better yourself. The, all I that stuff. I got, I got, I got the gist. <laughs> um, well, you guys got a huge uh, summer coming up uh, of touring. You're doing some festivals and stuff like that. Do you have anything, um, do you have any bands that you're playing alongside on any of those festivals that you're excited to see live or um, people that you haven't gotten to rub elbows with that you're stoked sp- to see? Um, I'm thinking about it. We're only playing like a couple festivals, but right off the bat, um, you know, Northlands is, is cool. I, you know, uh, I love the Do- Dobopod guys, you know, been a big fan of yeah. Dobopod for a long time. I don't think we've actually ever played a festival with them or shared a bill with them. So, uh, stoked to see those guys oh. at Northlands. It's awesome. There's a bunch of, bunch of homies on that festival. Yeah. 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 Stoked for that one me fun yeah but yeah not very very few festivals this year for us there's like doing a bunch of shows yeah it's good it's good it, you don't want to be, be doing great. 100 festivals I'm, it's not yeah <laughs> festivals are great they're all great Dude, we did but, so yeah. many last year it was like it was a lot last year you really did i got yeah. to i got to catch the cascade equinox one and that was that was a blast but it, it felt like you guys had already done like a bunch of festivals at that point um it was cool to catch a festival set though i feel you know there's like a there's a there's a cool way that you guys construct all of your set lists i love the like covers you guys pick i love everything that you guys do um you know throwing in the big fucking jams that you guys have but there was something about the construction of that cascade set where i was like this is great you know because there was a lot of goose fans there in oregon but there was a lot of you know pretty lights fans there too and so i was like this is a cool audience goose audience to be a part of you know yeah Um, yeah 
as opposed to Goosemas, which was just, it was Goosemas, man. It was full on goose crowd. Absolutely. Everyone going nuts the whole time. Yeah. Um, we had a, we had a freaking blast. I really liked that Borderlands festival we played last year. The one that in Buffalo, cool. just yeah. a really, really beautiful spot. We played Frisbee all day. And then like we, we jammed with the Dawes guys for like, you know, a long time. And it was, I just felt that that one had a really, really nice vibe to it. If, cool, if anyone's cool playing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Stoked for a lot of the, the places we're playing this summer. A bit, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Bunch of cool spots. I'm yeah. going to fly out from LA for some of them. I'm going to find my way to a couple of them. Oh, nice. Probably Fiddlers in Denver. We'll, I'll, I'll see, I'll you're, see you guys. You're, you're, you're an LA guy. You're not, you're I'm an LA guy. You're not a Chicago guy. You're an LA guy. Oh, yeah. I've been faking <laughs> it this whole time. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I moved here from Chicago two years ago, so nice. I'm, Hell yeah. I'm Mr. LA guy. I was at those. I was at the Wiltern show and the Santa Barbara shows, and those were sick as fuck. That's the best the comedy I've there. seen is at the comedy <laughs> store, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. We we try to hit that every time we're in town. It's so much fun. <laughs> I had some amazing, amazing nights there. Yeah. When some, yeah. some when you guys. When you guys were in town, I, I did a show on Wednesday and then Jeff was like, oh man, you should have let me know you had a show. Like what, what, what was the deal? I was like, oh, you know, we at the small theater. And then, you know, uh, he, I'm like, what'd you guys do last night? He's like, we went to the comedy store. I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, absolutely go do that. Like <laughs> go check out. I mean, did you guys get to see anyone cool? Well, the first time we went, we saw Kirk Fox. Kirk and Fox. It was it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I feel like every every time we go, there's there's there, like there's a lot of great stuff. A few weird ones, a lot of great stuff, and there's yeah. like someone that just just like reigns supreme. Um, yeah, and like yeah, the first time was definitely Kirk Fox. It was just, <laughs> he, he kind of like had one bit he was doing the whole time, and it was so good. It was so well executed. It was just incredible. Uh, and like the the second time we went, it was for sure Theo Vaughn. Oh uh, yeah, dude. Theo Fawn just rolled in so hot this one night and just obliterated. It was just insane. I that was actually there like middle his 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 thing. He was doing his thing about uh little Alan, you know, the, the little guy yeah. from his hometown. Yeah. How small Alan is and it was like <laughs> he was crushing so hard and then it, it hit a point where I almost like got I got really anxious because I was I was like physiologically felt like I needed to leave the room. You know, I hit that point where I was like, oh, shit, like I, I need to like chill out right now and like not pay attention to what he's saying because I feel like I'm about to like not be able to breathe anymore or something. I don't know. Like, <laughs> to, to Damn. Survived. But I'm, yeah, he, he crushed it. He is such a killer. He is just like, yeah, I mean, and when you go to the comedy store there, I mean, they are that's all new stuff. I mean, they're just like going off of like stuff they thought of that day. That is not going to be in yeah. the special. So that's like. Yeah, the coolest setting to see some of those guys too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that was that was a conversation with Rick and Peter from Goose. Um, clearly huge comedy fans, big comedy nerds. Um, no, I had so much fun talking with those guys. They're uh, just two goofballs, you know. These are these are guys who are putting out incredible music they're clearly very serious about their music and they take it seriously um but these are two guys who don't take themselves too seriously we we're able to joke around and 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 laugh about stuff and um man i uh super super lucky to have gotten to talk to those two dudes on this podcast um a couple things i want to bring up in the outro of this show so one are the beach boys the the key to goose is there some in the secret of Goose? Are the Beach Boys the secret? I don't know if you remember all the way back to when we were talking about first shows, but both Rick and Peter's first show was a Beach Boy show. Creepy, a little creepy. I don't know. Just for me, I got the chills when I heard that for the first time. You couldn't see it on the video, but I've got goosebumps. Ah, goosebumps. Kind of wild. Um, Fat Freddy's drop. Are you guys watching me just kind of, I have no idea what Fat Freddy's drop is in this episode. They're, they're bringing it up and they're talking about how they're going on your Europe, Europe tour with this band. And I'm like, uh-huh, for sure. Yeah, I know about that. I didn't know about that. I had to look them up afterwards and 
now I'm listening to a bunch of Fat Freddy's drop. I feel like my Spotify rap is going to reflect this at the end of the year uh, with the Fat Freddy's drop. Um, folks, that is that is all for the Rick and Peter episode of Best Show Ever. Thank you so much for listening all the way through. Um, if you just need more Rick and Peter, if you can't get enough Rick and Peter conversation, there is bonus material on the Patreon page right now. Um, become a member on the Patreon page. You can you can find that in the link of the bio of our Instagram page, uh, on my Instagram page, on my Twitter page. Uh, uh, it's available. You can find the link. Um, become a member for $4. There's just one tier. Um, and you'll get access to bonus clips. We've got a bonus clip of Andrew Sachs from last week. If you liked that conversation, um, we'll have bonuses of Rick and Peter this week. Um, in the future, we're going to have full episodes behind the paywall back there. So, um, make sure that you're signed up for that. We'll also have potentially some exclusive merch dropping at some point, um, that I'll put just behind the paywall, um, just for you special member people. Um, so go, uh, Get on that. We've got another episode out right now um, with uh, Brett Duncan, who is a part of the crew for WTED Radio, uh, which is the Goose community radio station. Uh, very similar to like a Jemp radio or uh, uh, radios of the like. Go check out WTED Radio. They are spinning great goose shit all the time. Uh, go check out the episode with Brett. Brett is... Uh, a buddy of mine out here in Southern California. We see a bunch of shows together. He tells some great stories, uh, including one about uh, going to see the last Slayer show, um, like rocking out next to Jason Momoa. Uh, so check that out. Um, check out the bonus clips. Uh, and until next week, guys, have a great show. <laughs>